President Trump is uh, continuing what he's calling a, quote, working vacation at his golf resort in North uh, in New Jersey. He unleashed a series of fairly angry tweets this morning, but he also wrote this, quote, working hard from New Jersey while the White House goes through a long planned renovation going to New York next week for more meetings. Washington Post congressional reporter Sean Sullivan joins us from Washington with the latest. Uh, Sean, great to see you. Um, we we're just talking about North Korea and uh, the president posted some angry tweets today about the media, the Russian investigation and, and a Democrat he doesn't like, but nothing on North Korea. Uh, what do we make of that and uh, what sense do we have about uh, what, if anything, he's uh, doing today? Well, I think, you know, it, it, it raises more questions about what this administration's strategy is going to be ultimately with regard to North Korea. We've seen Tillerson try to direct some tough talk toward the regime to try to warn them against these missile tests, but also at the same time show an openness that if the conditions are right, we'll sit down and, you know, potentially talk with you. So I think much of the Republican Party is aligned with Trump in wanting to sort of take a hard line to North Korea. But I think a lot of them are waiting to see what will this strategy be? Well, what will you do if they keep escalating this situation in the region? Are you going to be talking more openly about the prospect of a new, uh, of a, a military strike? Are you uh, taking that off the table? So I think the more silence we see, and again, you're right, today when this is a, you know, top of news issue, we haven't heard anything specific from the president yet. It's going to raise more questions among Republicans and really among everybody in the public. What are you going to be doing about this? In an incredibly partisan town right now, North Korea is one issue where there don't seem to be really clear, very different factions. Are there any groups or different views that you see taking shape in Washington on this issue? Not particularly, and you're right, compared to other issues, say health care, tax reform, some of the other big things that uh, are being debated in Congress uh, and that the White House is trying to push through the legislative process. You're right, there aren't that many divisions. It's, you know, it's not as if there are members of Congress out there that are being supportive of North Korea. I mean, Democrat, Republican, independent alike uh, are very, very hostile toward the regime, are not supportive of what they stand for and their human rights practices and, and all of those things. Uh, but I think the question is, again, back to the U.S. response, you know, if, if the U.S. does take military action, that could potentially turn off some members of Congress, both Republican and Democrat, who don't like the idea of intervening abroad, who don't like the idea of dragging uh, the United States into another potentially extended military conflict. So you could see some uh, distinctions and some disagreements emerge then. But you're right, for now, this is an issue where most of the country and most of Congress is pretty much on the same page, which is we can't let them keep escalating these hostilities in the region and we've got to do something about it. But the question is what and when? And we haven't seen a clear answer, I don't think, yet from this administration. Okay, switching gears, there was this report in the New York Times suggesting some Republicans, perhaps even including Vice President Pence, may be exploring the possibility, laying the groundwork uh, to challenge President Trump in the 2020 election. Uh, the vice president, of course, forcefully uh, pushed back on this. I mean, maybe this shouldn't be that much of a surprise when you have a, a quite unpopular president enmeshed in a bunch of investigations, not a traditional member of his own party, but it's still striking that three and a half years before the next election, you would have folks like Ben Sass talking maybe more openly about the possibility of challenging the president. What do we make of all this? You're right. It is striking considering that we are not even, you know, a year from the midterm elections yet, let alone the 2020 election. But look, this is something Republican strategists, donors and others have been quietly talking about basically since the day that Trump was elected and, you know, when the day that, that, that he was sworn in. There's been a lot of uncertainty. Is he going to run? Is he going to be popular enough to run? Will he draw some sort of primary challenge? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think this reflects the anxiety in the Republican Party right now. They want to be prepared. They don't want to be caught flat-footed. And you also have a lot of young, ambitious Republicans. You mentioned Sass and, of course, the vice president himself, who seems to be in the mix right now. There are a lot of Republicans who realize, look, if I just wait this out and sit on my hands, you know, one day Trump could just announce I'm not going to run. And if he does, I need to be prepared. And so I think these Republicans realize if they're not taking trips to Iowa, if they're not meeting donors, if they're not making speeches uh, in high profile places, they could be left behind the pack if and when Trump decides that he's not going to run. And the more and more unpopular uh, that he is, the more appetite there's going to be among these wealthy Republican donors who are going to be looking for an alternative. So I think these potential candidates are trying to position themselves for the donors as much as anything else. They want to be able to go to those donors if and when Trump doesn't run and say, hey, we've cultivated this relationship over the last you know, year and a half, two years. Now that Trump's out of the picture, you should back me. And I think that's really what they're positioning themselves for right now.
Well, the fact that Donald Trump would just magically disappear has been a Republican uh, mainstream wish for going on a couple years now. Barring that, though, we seem to see some fissures in the party. We see Senator Jeff Flake from Arizona coming out with this 160-page book, which was basically calling out Republicans for not calling out the president. We see some Republicans breaking with him on the transgender military ban and other issues. Do we see any sense yet that the, the party may in some meaningful way be moving away from the president? I think we do. The last week, really, in particular, was very, very striking to me, being up on Capitol Hill and talking to many Republican senators. A lot of them talked about the president as if he were an afterthought, not as if he is the leader of the party. You know, they said, well, look, if we can work with him, great. If we can't, they kind of shrugged their shoulders. It's a really, really striking thing to see, again, six, seven months into this presidency. And so Republicans have been careful. You know, you don't have many Republicans out there saying they fully denounce President Trump. What we've seen from Jeff Flake seems to be more the exception than the rule. But slowly and quietly, I think we're seeing these Republicans back away from Trump a little bit more. And so it'll be interesting to see when we get back from this August recess, whether they kind of inch closer to him, whether when they go home, they hear from their constituents, maybe some angry conservatives who say, hey, we need you to be more supportive of the president, or whether we see the opposite, whether they go home and they get even more pressure from their constituents to back away from this president, to back away from the Russia controversy, to back away from some of the fights he's picked with lawmakers. Uh, and if that's the case, then we're going to see even more of a separation in September. And this could have a huge, huge impact on the coming legislative fights, because if Republicans are not on the same page on tax reform, if they're not on the same page on the debt ceiling, we could see some huge fiscal crises coming down the pipeline. Okay, you've previewed my next question. We've seen some interesting details on uh, the new chief of staff, John Kelly, kind of whipping the White House in shape in certain ways. But one of the, the hesitations with uh, Kelly as a chief of staff has always been his very limited, almost nil experience on Capitol Hill. Does, do you see that playing out at all in the way the White House and uh, Congress is, is interacting? And how, how can Kelly play that role? Well, I think that, you know, judging by the conversations I had with some Republican members of Congress last week before they left town, several of them were pretty open to the idea of John Kelly coming into this role. Maybe they didn't know him necessarily so well, but I think they saw the chaos that was in the White House and the lack of control that Reince Priebus had over that situation. And they looked at each other and said, well, look, this couldn't get any worse. So even though Kelly doesn't necessarily have that long resume of experience dealing with Capitol Hill, negotiating legislation and that kind of stuff, I think there is some goodwill toward him right now among members of Congress who are just looking for stability, looking for some sort of way to turn the page on all of the staff infighting and all the controversy that has erupted at the White House for the last six months because they think that it's really, really distracted from their legislative agenda. So, you know, I think Kelly is trying to introduce himself to members of Congress. The White House has said he's already started reaching out to them. And like I said, the early read on Capitol Hill among Republicans is, hey, let's let's give this guy a chance. This is a fresh start. Um, we can clean the slate. You know, he may not have that uh, detailed knowledge of how Congress works the way we do. But if he can restore order on that side of Pennsylvania Avenue, let us do our job on this side of Pennsylvania Avenue, this could be a working relationship. And so I think that's the dynamic that he faces right now. But we'll see where it goes, because if he does lose control, you're going to see members of Congress once again say, look, we need to bring in somebody new. Okay, Sean Sullivan coming to us from the Washington Post newsroom. Sean, good to see you. Thanks very much.